is being uh, assembled, we collaborate, communicate, and cooperate to be sure that anything that needs to be done, whether it's hurricanes or floods or, or anything else, we, we have, the, have the people, have the brain power to, to know what we're doing and to do it just right. Uh, as far as the, the, you all hear about the, the coronavirus, which is, is something, something new on the medical scene, uh, which is, is one reason that it is uh, attracting so much interest because it's a, it's a new kind of virus. But I would say uh, to, if I could quote the, the, the group, the Eagles, my advice is take it easy. Don't get all excited. Uh, this, is, this is not a hurricane. It's not a flood. This is, a, this is a, it's just, a, it's like the flu. This coronavirus, uh, you could call it the first cousin to the regular flu, and probably everybody in here has had the, had the flu or a cold. And what do you do when you have a flu or a cold? You go home and you call your doctor and you go home. And so that's, that's what, if you have the flu or you have a, a bad cold, call your doctor, go home, stay home till you get well. This, this particular virus, uh, unlike the chicken pox, which is carried in the air, can float around, the other things, diseases that are airborne. This one is not airborne. That means that those of us in this room, as long as we're not getting sneezed on or coughed on or touching a surface where someone is sneezed or coughed and then rubbed their mouth or rubbed their eye or rubbed their nose, you're not going to get this virus. It is not airborne. It is transferred by contact. It is in droplets. When someone sneezes or coughs, if those droplets are not caught with a handkerchief or a hand, if they go on a surface or go on the person's hand and then they touch your hand and you touch your face, your nose, your eyes, or your mouth, then if they have this virus, then you can get the virus. It's just that simple. So if you just do what your mama told you all those years ago, and that is if you go sneeze or cough, cover your mouth. If someone is sneezing or coughing, stay away from them. Or uh, wash your hands all day long. The, the main way to kill this virus, if it is present, is how? Not with some dramatic chemical, not with radiation, not with the atomic bomb, but with warm water and soap. There's something in soap that everybody here has used this morning, I presume, and warm water that will kill the membrane on this virus. It might be the easiest virus in the world to kill with, hot, with just warm water and soap. So do what your mama said. Cover, cover your nose, cover your mouth if you're sneezing or coughing. Be courteous to your neighbors. Don't sneeze on people or cough on people and scare them. But wash your hands. If you don't have hot water, warm water and soap, then just use the, use the sanitizer. Just like they do in the hospitals. You see them doing it all day long. You don't need a mask don't need a face mask. Why? Because this is not airborne. It is spread by contact. And we have how many cases in South Carolina? Zero. How many in the U.S.? Very few. We've had two deaths in the, in the United States since this whole thing started. So again, I say take, take it easy. Don't panic. You don't need to stock up on anything except maybe hand sanitizer. Have some of that, but everybody's got soap and water. And I assure you, with, with, as you saw the people that were here earlier, and many of them are still here standing with us, we've, we have people that know how to do these things, uh, what uh, precautions uh, need to be taken. Those are the ones that I'm, I'm telling you about. But again, if you think you've got a bad cough or, or, or the flu, then what do you do? You call the doctor, you go home, and you take it easy. So that, that's our message, and we will be continuing to meet and communicate to be sure that South Carolina is way ahead of, of everybody in getting the best information and disseminating that to all of those that can, can give it out uh, to, the, to our people, all five million of us. With that, Dr. Toomey, please. Thank you, Governor. Yes, sir. Now wash your hand. I'm going to. <laughs> Give me some of that sound.
Good morning. My name is Rick Toomey. I'm the director of DHEC. And at DHEC, we are uh, closely monitoring the emerging public health event, the coronavirus or COVID-19. Part of our mission is prevention. But the other part of our mission is education. And education, such as the meeting we had this morning, sharing information with, with each other, sharing information with each of you, is so important with regards to this virus, the COVID-19. Uh, with us today uh, is uh, Nick Davidson, our Acting Director of Public Health, and Dr. Traxler, one of our DHEC physicians. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Traxler to give an overview of where we stand. Uh, the important part that is really exciting for DHEC for us right now is the CDC authorized the DHEC lab as of Thursday evening that we can do testing here now. So we are authorized to do testing. So samples do not have to be sent from any hospital in the state to Atlanta. They can come to Columbia. Part of that next focus is to disseminate those testing capabilities to regional hospitals and to hospitals. But we made a wonderful uh, breakthrough with the CDC getting the testing kit out to state labs. And we, again, have that capability here in the state. Dr. Traxler, and thank you. I'm going to take some. I want it back. You want it back? <laughs> Good morning. Thank you, Governor, and thank you, Director Toomey. We at DHEC are very closely monitoring this rapidly evolving situation that is rapidly evolving both worldwide and the United States. However, I want to reiterate what Do Governor McMaster said. There are no cases confirmed in South Carolina at this time. DHEC will notify the public if there were to be a confirmed case. I want to also reiterate what the governor said about the methods of prevention for this. Again, most importantly is that hand washing. Soap and warm water frequently for at least 20 seconds. It's roughly as long as it takes to sing the alphabet song. And Use the hand sanitizer if you don't have soap and water, as we just saw a great example of. Another, another cleaning method we want to use is disinfecting surfaces, hard surfaces that are touched frequently. Do that very often with just your common you know, household disinfectant. Practice good respiratory etiquette. Cover your cough when you cough or sneeze. Throw away your tissues immediately after you use them. And then stay home when you're sick. Don't go to school, work, other crowded places, but stay home. Save the masks for the healthcare workers and folks who may need them at some point. And again, understand that at DHEC, this is what we do. We prepare on a daily basis for diseases such as this. We are monitoring the situation and remaining in close contact with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and following their guidance. If people think they are ill, we encourage them to call their physician. Um, and then in regards to the testing, it is exciting that we have this ability now at our lab. However, people still need to meet the CDC criteria to be tested, and all testing does have to be authorized by DHEC, so specimens cannot just go directly to the lab. So with that, I will turn it back over to Governor McMaster. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Again, <clears throat> it's not airborne. If you're walking through the mall, you're not going to catch it unless somebody sneezes on you or coughs on you because it goes in droplets, that is, like raindrops, and they go down to surfaces. Or they can be on your hands if you sneeze or cough in your, in your hand. So that's why we ask people if, when you just wash, wash your hands, warm water, do what you ought to be doing that. We all ought to be doing that several times a day any, anyway because of, of other things that we can, we can catch. But the, the symptoms are just like the flu, just like a bad cold. Again, no cases in South Carolina yet. We hope we don't, don't, don't get any. But if you don't want to be a case, wash your hands with warm water and soap several times a day. If, if someone is sneezing or coughing, get away. You don't want to get any of that on you. And if you feel sick, then do just like you do for a flu or bad cold. Go home, call your doctor. That's all you have to do. It will be just fine. Any questions by anybody? Yes, sir. I have uh, two for you. One, I was wondering if you could respond to what the president said a couple of days ago about Democrats politicizing the government's response 
help if the Democratic folks. I know you were there. I wanted to have you respond to that, one. And then two, you talked about how this might affect deployments overseas, military deployments. Well, let's ask. General? Well, right now, from, from the South Carolina National Guard's perspective, we're not tracking any uh, information that changes any of the plans that we have for deployments. Uh, we are, though, uh, uh, going to be affected some by travel that was non-critical in terms of uh, supporting the mission. We have seen some cancellation in that, but things that directly impact mobilizations, there has been no guidance yet driven that uh, changes any of those requirements. Thank you. As far as the other question, that's, that's one I think the President answered that. I think that he was referring to being blamed on him was a, yet another hoax. I know you told yes, people, you know, don't panic, take extra precautions to kind of prevent the spread or even the whole fear. Um, but um, the, we forget your question, the concern from our viewers. You know, first we thought it was something isolated to the Asian continent, and now we're seeing cases pop up without people who have traveled. What would you say to people who are worried that, hey, we're going to see a case here in South Carolina would be the next place? Well, I think Dr. Traxler uh, answered uh, that. Uh, I would say this is, is something new. That's, that's why there's so much interest, and it's always interesting when something new that we haven't seen before uh, comes along. And also the fact that is, as yet we, we have not developed a, a vaccine you can get a vaccine for most kinds of, of flu these days. But uh, again, this is, a, this is a, an easy thing to, to protect yourself against. All you have to do, because of the way that it is being spread, and it's, it's by it's contact, it's by contact, it's not airborne. And that is you have to touch those droplets and somehow get those droplets in your eyes, your nose, or your mouth, and if you don't do that, then that is the way that this is, is spread, and if you don't do that, then you're not going to uh, contact it. You're not going to have it. And it just feels and looks just like the regular flu, but of course it's, it's something new, it's something different. That, uh, so we just urge everybody to stay calm, don't get excited. This is, this is another new thing, but it's so easy to protect yourself, and we hope we don't have any cases in South Carolina. That's the main message. This is an easy virus to protect yourself against just by staying away from people who are coughing and sneezing on you, wash your hands, warm water and, and soap. If you get sick, if you feel sick for any reason, do what you always do. Go home, get into bed and call the doctor. Go. Yes, sir. Over there. Oh, yes. So we heard constantly about the economic impact of the Department of Commerce. So is this something that, like, you know, like a lot of different companies dealing with Well, that's a part of free enterprise. You never know when the chain logistics chain is going to be uh, stopped or diverted. And so that, that's why, as we were speaking earlier, uh, that all businesses always have plan A, plan B, and plan C to get the things that they need. And because a lot of these parts come from, come from Asia, come from China, uh, there are plans being made to address that. Yes. Director Bundy, possibly a comment on that? I know we're from the upstate, so we have states that the DHW are concerned. I know you mentioned something about a business person yes. um, being able to do some replacement part. Kind of what we're seeing from the economic impact? Sure. I think uh, the governor alluded certainly to the – we obviously are working in a global supply chain, and some of that supply chain is from Asia, some of it's from Mexico, some of it's from Europe. and. Uh, you have some great companies in the upstate. We have some great companies all over the state, and they're all working daily to maximize those supply chains. And when there's an, inter an interruption, and it might be COVID, it might be um, a hurricane, it might be anything, uh, those companies are working a ways to solve those interruptions as quickly as possible. And they will be resolved, and, uh, and life will, will go on. So I think the, the comment I would make would be, that resolution is always in process, and the governor alluded to the contingency plans, and, and believe me, they're, they're in full force, so everyone's working on, uh, on uh, no shortages or minimization of those. See, the, the really, the, the good news in all this is our economy is so strong and manufacturing is so strong that 
we are we we are we're worldwide. We we get things from all over the world and send things all over, over the world. But there are always disruptions in these supply lines. That's why people are, are working on logistics. Or so or you could if you talk to Jim Newsom down at the port, you'd be amazed at the, the kind of logistics that they deal with. A good example is that boat, the ship that turned over uh, in Georgia. Well, that was a disruption in the supply line for sure. That was a major disruption. But those are those are those are a part of the part of the marketplace and part of the standard operating procedure for businesses. And, and what we're saying here, this is standard operating procedure for for anything, just just like a, a flu outbreak. In fact, in the United States so far this this year, uh, starting with the flu season, the regular flu season, about 16,000 people have died in the United States since September till now, and they've been tested about 260 or 280,000 cases. So that's that's just the regular common flu that we're so accustomed to. Well, this feels like the, like the flu. That is the, the symptoms, what you feel, but it's a little it's different. So again, if if when you if you get the flu, or you get a cold, do what you do when you always do. Do what Mama told you. Go home. Go to bed, take it easy, uh, and call your doctor. Governor, uh, the, yes, sir. The governor of Florida said, besides their two confirmed cases, they have been monitoring hundreds of others and had some negatives. Can you talk about? I know the state has no confirmed cases. Has the DHEC been monitoring anybody or had any negative test results? Doctor, no, governor, I can take Hi, Nick Davidson, uh, acting director of public health with DHEC. We, you're exactly right. We don't have any confirmed cases. Um, we are routinely, as we do every day during the normal flu season, uh, working with providers around the state uh, to help them assess cases. Um, and so uh, we will test as necessary, um, but for the most part, we've been working with them to help them understand what are the, the, uh, the actual symptoms and to help them uh, diagnose those cases. And so we have not had any positives at this point in time. We'll certainly be in, tune, uh, in touch when we do that. I know you guys mentioned international travel in there and that it's not a big thing here in South Carolina, but we've got international businesses and there are certainly citizens from here who are abroad right now who will be coming back. Is there anything we're doing um, at the port? Are we screening or testing folks who are coming back from Europe or one of the uh, areas where it's been a uh, problem? Well, the, the port of Charleston doesn't deal with people, so. Well, I just mean the coastline. That's what I was Sir? Say. The coastline, so when people are coming back in. I can speak to the monitoring of international travelers. DHEC is following the guidance that is laid out by the CDC for monitoring of travelers returning from affected areas. And that is an ongoing process. And again, it has not resulted in any confirmed cases. Does that mean you guys are screening anyone or just in general? I'm sure you probably can't talk about specifics per se, but I mean, what does that entail? So uh, the CDC, I believe, has put that information on their travelers website. Uh, those folks are screened by the federal government when they enter the country for health screenings. They're given information about the disease, the symptoms to watch for. They then make touch, uh, get in touch with DHEC. We make touch with them, contact with them when they arrive in the state. And then we, um, we ask them to, to stay home, uh, to stay away from crowds uh, for up to 14 days, and we assist them in monitoring themselves. Sure. So we have been doing a lot of outreach. As Dr. Toomey mentioned, part of our mission, in addition to preparedness, is that, um, that education of providers and other partners in the state. So we have been working with various entities, including businesses, um, st other state agencies, schools, child care centers, colleges, and universities, and helping provide them guidance and resources through the CDC so that they can be prepared. We have had multiple meetings with various stakeholders. We have more of those meetings planned in the upcoming days. And uh, as to if there were to be a case, again, we would let the public know um, as soon as there was a confirmed case. Are you guys considering quarantines or travel restrictions? That's right there. Say it again. Are, are you guys right now considering travel restrictions or quarantines at this point, limiting international business even? Uh, as to actual quarantines or limiting travelers, um, that anything of that sort is being done by the federal government. Um, in terms of business, I'll let um, Mr. Bundy or Governor McMaster answer that. Uh, no, just simply just that the businesses are abiding uh, 
all of their employees are riding around the rules set forth by CDC. Are there any? He said that any, uh, all of the international businesses are abiding by the rules that the CDC and uh, Customs and Border Protection and the State Department have put forth. Governor, do you expect any changes to your schedule? There's probably nobody in South Carolina who interfaces with people more on a daily basis than you do. Um, you know, so I'm just wondering, you know, is this going to affect your travel schedule at all or events or anything like that? No, sir. No, I, no not, not a bit. Um, I'm going everywhere. You name some place, if I haven't been there, I'll, I'll go. As soon as I but no, I just, I always wash my hands and all that. Uh, anyhow, I, must, I shake a lot of hands all day long, so I, I, I do what Mama told me to do, and that's keep clean, don't sneeze on anybody, and uh, always uh, carry a handkerchief with you. Certainly. So um, currently there is no vaccine or treatment for this virus. Uh, there are multiple vaccines worldwide in development. Uh, from what I understand, and this again, the CDC and the FDA could speak more to this, but they are hoping to begin trials in the coming months of some of the first uh, options for vaccines. Regarding treatments, there are clinical trials going on uh, both globally and within the United States for, for treatment against this. As yeah. far as our coastal areas like Charleston, is there a plan right now to test people as they get off of cruise ships or some sort of contingency plan related to cruise ship travel? Again, we are just following the CDC's guidance at this point, and there is no specific recommendation for screening of uh, passengers who are just getting off of your regular everyday cruise ship. Two more questions. Can you talk about the opportunity, uh, maybe Governor, this one's for you, or Director Bundy about um, maybe some of the businesses having to produce replacement parts for the affected parts of China. Sure. So some of those some of those businesses, uh, quite frankly, have have found some new suppliers here in South Carolina, and um, we're, we're a, a, as a group of collaborative companies, we're always trying to work with each other in the supply chain. So some of that's going on as we speak, and some of that's coming from here in, in South Carolina. Uh, certainly, the companies using those supplies are, are speaking daily with their counterparts in other parts of the world to discern where, actually, where those levels are. And, um, and, and there's still, everyone is operating actively today. Uh, no one shut down. And um, uh, there are some inventories out there and again, working with other companies on, on those solutions where there may be a longer time of disruption. Can we so uh, just no. kind of go over the uh, test kits? Uh, how many do we have? And what's kind of like the timeline when it comes to testing somebody and getting a uh, answer of whether they have the disease or not? Sure. Uh, we want to be able to provide information that's both timely, um, accurate, and, and actionable. Uh, so we do have the ability in, in the state to provide that testing. Uh, it's similar to the CDC, our testing turnaround is 24 to 48 hours uh, from the moment we receive the sample. Most times it's, it's quicker than that, uh, but certainly that, is, uh, that would be the longest that it would, that it would take. Uh, we have the capacity to test uh, up to approximately 100 a day at this point in time, uh, and we are nowhere near that at this point. So our, our capacity is, is robust. How many of you guys testing a day right now? Sure. Uh, the, we definitely want to ensure the information that we put out um, is actionable by the public. As the governor said, this is not a time to panic. There's a lot of interest right now around this, and so there's bound to be a lot of requests that we have uh, for testing. And so we're, we're going to make sure to inform people of positive results that, that we have because that's <coughs> the information that's actionable from a public health standpoint. Okay. Well, as you all can tell, uh, we, we're like the Boy Scouts. We're prepared, and we believe in over preparedness and that's why we communicate collaborate and cooperate across across the board to be sure that everything that there is to know and all the resources that are available are brought to bear on the situation but again this is this is a simple one if you don't don't have a handkerchief get one if you're coughing and sneezing cover you cover your face if someone else is Coughing and sneezing, stay away from them. Wash your hands several times a day. Warm water and soap, because that kills this virus. The soap will kill the virus right there. And if you don't have soap and water, get you some hand sanitizer. 
If you feel like you're coming down with a cold or the flu, go home, go to bed, and call the doctor. And if, if necessary, then we can go to the, the next stage of testing. But so far, that's, as you can tell, that's been of interest, but not a lot of activity in, in South Carolina. So we are, we'll keep you very much informed, keep you up to date. And we believe in alerting the citizens when necessary. But again, this is, this is not something to panic about or to rush to the stores about. This is, uh, this is there's no, normal ways to, to protect yourself and be safe and be happy and go on about your business. And as, if, if things change, uh, we'll certainly alert. And thank you for coming. I saw that. <laughs>